everybody, welcome back to another video lesson. Uh, today we're going to focus our attention on the calculations revolving around thermochemical equations. So if you haven't done so, you might want to take a look at the video lesson on enthalpy and thermochemical equations, because I'm not going to really go into the explanations, I'm just going to show you how we do the calculations. So let's start with the first example. The first example we're looking for how much heat is released when 13.2 grams of hydrogen reacts with excess nitrogen. Uh, they give us the balance equation along with the change in enthalpy. So what I'm looking for here is heat, and heat is represented by Q and it's going to have units of kilojoules. So this is the quantity of heat that is being, um, in this case since it's negative, uh, change in enthalpy, we know that this is an exothermic process. So this is the quantity of heat that's being released from the system to the surroundings. Okay, so we're starting with 13.2 uh, grams of hydrogen. They tell us that there's excess amounts of nitrogen, so therefore I don't really care about the nitrogen in this particular problem because I know that it's going to be left over. They don't give us enough information um, to figure out really anything about the nitrogen other than the fact that it's excess. So as you can see, in the future this could be a limiting reactive problem if I gave you both the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So for now, we know that we're going to start with a certain amount of hydrogen. It's going to go down by 3x and it's going to run out, and that's what we want to know. We want to make sure that the hydrogen all runs out. And when it does, how much heat is released when we do that? Before we were doing was we were calculating the amount of ammonia produced. And we still could do that. But we don't really care about that in this particular problem because it's focusing on the heat. So my first step here is to get rid of the uh, mass of the hydrogen, which is 13.2 grams. So I'm just going to use the molar mass of hydrogen to make that conversion. So 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen gives me a value of 6.535 moles of hydrogen. So this is the number that I'm going to stick in here, 0.535 moles. And when all those moles are used up and goes to zero, how much heat would be generated? Well, all I really need to do is one last step, and that's to use the change in enthalpy. Because what the balanced equation tells me is that for every three moles, of hydrogen, it will produce negative 91.8 kilojoules. Now the negative is there just to tell us that this reaction is exothermic. I'll come back to that in just a second. But for right now, let's just go ahead and calculate everything that's in there. But the negative is just saying it's exothermic. So if I continue with the calculation and I multiply by 91.8 and divide by 3, I end up with 1 99.96 and if I do the significant figures that's going to come out to a negative 200 um, kilojoules and since I have about three significant figures I'll put my decimal here and that would be kilojoules of energy so that's the amount of heat that's being released now here's the problem here is it's telling me in the problem that the heat is being released I cannot really release a negative number so when it tells us the direction of heat and it tells us that heat is released or formed or produced, we really don't want to be putting the negative sign in here. Even though we use it as a sign to show that it's negative, it's already being told in the problem. So I know this can get a little confusing, so um, we kind of work on it a little bit as we go through stuff in class and get rid of that negative sign. And we're going to keep it as a positive. Okay, so 200, and 200 kilojoules of energy is released when I combust or burn up 13.2 grams of hydrogen. So that's how we use the um, thermochemical equations. This is telling me how much energy per mole of reactant, but remember we don't typically use moles, we use them in masses. And don't forget, we also know how to do this in, um, since this is a hydrogen gas, instead of giving you masses, I could be giving you pressures and volumes and temperatures, and that would be another way using PV equals NRT to find those numbers of moles. All right, so let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this example, we're doing something a little bit different. Here, they're giving us the amount of heat that's being produced, and we're trying to figure out the mass. So this time, I'm looking for mass in grams, and I'm starting with the heat. So in this case, I have heat. And what's going on here is I want to know how much heat is going to be produced. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. How, well, <laughs> say that again. How much mass is being produced when we have 243 kilojoules of heat produced. So we're going to focus this time over here on the ammonia. And we're going to have a minus 2x here. And we're going to have this end up as 0. Nope, I should take that back. 0 is up here because we start with 
zero amounts of the ammonia and the ammonia is being produced. We don't really know how many of the products reactants we have. We're only focusing solely on the, the products. So I'm going to need to figure out how many moles of the ammonia are formed. Once I do that, I can then convert to mass. And it all starts with the energy. So here I'm going to start with the heat, whereas in the last problem, I actually used heat, or I found the heat from the mass. So it's kind of going to go backwards. So 243.1 kilojoules of heat is produced. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my change in enthalpy, because the change in enthalpy tells me how much it is per mole. In this case, it's per 2 moles of the ammonia. So I've got to keep that in mind. So I'm going to put on the bottom this time 91.8 kilojoules. Now remember this is an exothermic process so the heat is being released every time two moles of the ammonia is formed. Now over here I'm going to make this negative because this is the heat produced, right? It's the heat formed, heat generated in the reaction. So therefore I'm going to put this here so that these two signs cancel because if I have a negative in my calculation I cannot have a negative mass. It doesn't make any conceptual sense. So if I calculate this, I'm going to end up with 5.296 moles of ammonia. So that's how many moles of ammonia are going to be produced when I generate that amount of heat. So that's how many moles. Um, but remember, it's every two moles is what I would, you know, two moles is going to give me that energy. That's why this is double. So it makes sense that this number is bigger. I shouldn't say double. It's five times greater. But it's, it's point is, the number here, the heat is greater than the heat change in enthalpy, so therefore I would expect more moles than two to be formed. All right, anyway, so the last part here is just to convert those moles into mass. So I'm going to go from one mole of the ammonia, NH3, and I'm going to go to the grams of NH3, which is 17.04, and that should be a four. Um, so go ahead and calculate this out, and you end up with 90.25 grams of ammonia produced. That would be the amount of ammonia that we get in the reaction. So if I want to produce this amount of heat, I'm going to make 90.25 grams of ammonia to do that. All right, so that would be another example. So this one is, take a look at this and compare it to the last one. You can see how the flow of the problem works. It's, it's the complete opposite of the last one. Okay, for a third example we're going to look at, in this case we're trying to find the change in enthalpy uh, that's going to go into this reaction. Okay, we're going to do this, we can find this number by using calorimeters. Uh, calorimeter, remember, is a way to measure heat transfers that are going on. So that's what this calorimeter is doing. So the scientist is taking 150 grams of methane, placing it in the calorimeter, and then they do the reaction, in this case a combustion reaction, and it produces 8,322 kilojoules of heat. So that's how much heat is being generated when they use 150 grams of the methane. So we want to use this information to figure out how many... Uh, kilojoules of energy is being used up every time one mole of methane is being used. We're using the methane here because that's what they used in the reaction. If they focused on oxygen, then we would pay attention to the oxygen. If they were looking at the water formed, we'd look at that. But in this case, we're looking at the methane. So we're going to take uh, the information here. So I've got a mass of 150 grams of the methane, CH4, and that is going to produce a certain amount of heat and because it's being produced, in this case it's a combustion reaction, it's being released, it's going to be a negative value for this. Now I'm going to keep that negative here, just, and I'll talk about that at the end of the problem, why I do that. Okay, so I got the negative energy released, 150 grams. Remember, changes in enthalpy is the amount of heat per mole of material we're talking about. In this case, it would be the methane. So what I want to do is figure out the number of moles of methane. So I'm going to go ahead and do grams on the bottom. And if you look up the molar mass of methane, it's 16.0, try writing that better, 0 0.05 grams of CH4. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? For every one mole of CH4, that will give me my, my moles. If I do that calculation, I end up with 9.346 moles of the methane. Okay, so that's how many moles of methane produced this amount of energy. So for my change in enthalpy, what I want to do is take the Q, which is the heat, negative 8322 kilojoules, over my moles, which is 
four, six moles of methane. So I'm going to divide these out and that will give me my moles, kilojoules per mole of methane. And when you do that you end up with a negative 890 kilojoules of energy. That's per mole of CH4. So that's how much energy is coming out. Now I'm going to keep the negative in here. Now I know last one of the previous problems I said, well, it says it's released energy, so we don't put the negative. The reason we have to put the negative is because we're going to put this into the balanced equation. And we need to keep that negative there, so if someone else sees this equation, they look at that and say, oh, it's negative, because you're not always going to see the words at the top. We just want to figure out what the change in enthalpy is for this particular reaction. We need to show that it's an exothermic reaction, so that's why I'm going to keep it here in this particular case, because I'm trying to figure out the property of this particular chemical reaction. All right, so um, there, were, there are three examples of how to calculate um, using thermochemical equations. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.